Do you have investigative skills? The answer to that is yes, and I'll explain why later. Do you want to improve your skills? Hopefully, the answer to that is yes also. Would you like to try and solve a real murder case right here on this episode? If you do, stick around, because that's exactly what we're going to do. Welcome to Nothing But The Truth, the podcast about investigations and how you can become a better detective. This is the no BS, no Hollywood nonsense real deal. Now here's your host, Detective Rom. Hey there, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Nothing But The Truth, the podcast that makes investigators and investigations better. I'm your host, Ramesh Nyberg, Detective Rom. As you may already know, I'm a retired police officer and homicide investigator, spent most of my career working death cases. I created this podcast to make the investigative industry better by helping you get better. I really do care about how investigations are done, and I think the industry can always get better, but that starts with all of us individually. In this special episode, you're going to actually be given some facts and circumstances and a couple of sketches, which I hope you're going to go get. I'll tell you how to get them now. And we're going to work a homicide case together. Not a fake one, not a homicide case out of someone's imagination, but a real case that actually happened back in the 80s that I worked on. Before we get to that, you can contact me by email, truth at nybergpi.com, T-R-U-T-H at N-Y-B-E-R-G-P-I, like privateinvestigator.com, You can also go to Patreon and look up the Nothing But The Truth episode and become a patron, which would be wonderful, and join conversations that we'll have there between you and I and other listeners. And those are the easiest ways to get a hold of me. You can also follow us on Twitter at NybergPI. You know, I've been talking about future episodes and what we're going to be featuring and how we're going to be talking about real cases. And we're here now. We've reached that point. I think the best way to get better at anything is to practice and to actually do it. People can teach you things out of books. They can explain things, you know, forever. But until you're actually there doing it, you're not going to learn those skills. They're not going to get internalized. And that's what we're going to try and accomplish today. Before we get started with the actual case, I'm going to tell you how to get the sketches. Now, you can do this without the sketches. If you want to just jot down notes while I'm talking, that's great. But I think the sketches will make this a lot more fun. You'll have a visual to work with. And I've actually given you an overview of the scene itself, where this murder took place, uh, what was there when myself and my team of investigators went there back in 1987. And you'll be able to look at those items and start to take notes. Now, one of the most important things that an investigator does when a new case comes up, is to start a lead sheet. If you recall in the last episode, I explained to you what a lead was. That was anything that needed to be done on a case. It's like a to-do list, right? So if somebody says, hey, there was a witness in that green building on the second floor, one of your leads or one of the leads that you would give out to your team members would be go up there, start knocking on doors, find out who that witness is. So you're going to actually keep a lead sheet. And that's what I'm trying to teach you about today. That's the most important thing you'll learn is how to assemble leads from information that you're given, from your observations, going onto a crime scene, talking to people, looking at the circumstances. What leads will you do? What is important to accomplish early on in the case? So you'll keep a list or a lead sheet. If you don't download the lead sheet, that's fine. You can just keep a list on a piece of paper. That's fine. Here's where you go to get these documents. There are two of them, three including the lead sheet. So You can go to our Facebook page, Nothing But The Truth, and you'll see my most recent post there will have those documents attached. You can just download them from there. You can also go to Twitter at Nyberg PI. I will also post a tweet there with the documents attached so you can download them. Or you can go to my website, NybergPI.com. All the way to the right on the top menu bar, there's a link that says More, and then you can choose News, Podcasts, and More. And on the right-hand side of the page there, you'll see three little images. And I've even put a notation there that the images for this podcast are on the right side. And download them. Hit the pause button, go get those images, and come back and let's get started on this real murder case. And we are going to go back to 1987. This is a motel 
on the north side of Northwest 36th Street, which is just north of Miami International Airport. Uh, you can first take a look at the sketch of the overall motel. From a crime scene perspective, we always want to look from the general to the specific. If you were there as a crime scene photographer, you would be taking pictures of the outside, the parking lot, the overall building first before you start taking pictures on the inside. The crime scene investigation as a product should tell a story. So take a look at that and, and you'll see that it's an L-shaped building. Our crime scene exists on the second floor at the apex of that L in room number 11. From here, you can go, go directly to the interior crime scene, which is a very crude sketch that I've made. This is not what a real crime scene sketch would look like. But this just gives you an idea of what we were working with that day and what you're going to be working with right now. It's a small motel room. You can see that there are certain artifacts on the scene that have a legend on the right-hand side that'll tell you exactly what they are. You can see an open door on the bottom of, the, of that image. To the left, you'll see the victim's body, which is up against the wall. Partially his shoulders and head were actually propped partially up against the wall. He's on the floor next to the bed. There's a large amount of blood all around that area. To the right of the body on the floor is a broken lamp. It's got a wooden pedestal. There are some blood stains on that lamp. On the bed, you've got additional blood stains. Everything is in kind of disarray. There's blood stains on the wall. There's also a bloody shoe print on that bed. It's a size nine men's shoe print. Those shoe prints are all also seen leading out of the room, out into the walkway, and then they kind of fade out. The victim is not a size nine, so this is someone else who was on the scene. There's also a dresser on the extreme right-hand side with a television on it. There's nothing really interesting there, anything noteworthy. What is noteworthy is a round table next to the dresser with four empty beer cans. There's no blood or anything else found here. And by the way, there are no weapons. When I mean weapons, I mean firearms or knives. There are none of those types of items found on this crime scene. As you move further to the upper left-hand corner of, this, of the uh, sketch, you'll see that there's a small dividing wall which goes into a bathroom area, and then you have a sink and a toilet. We found some blood-stained water in the sink. The toilet is unremarkable. There's nothing there. Moving to the right of the toilet, you'll see a small box which represents a window uh, up against the wall there, and then the bathtub. The bathtub is interesting because we have several items in the bathtub, including a clock radio, and a toaster. But the important thing is that there are things in there that are normally not found in a bathtub. There's also a few inches of water in the bathtub, and it's bloodstained. Now, in terms of the interior of the crime scene, that's really all you've got. There's a lot of blood on him. There's also a lot of blunt trauma. What is blunt trauma? That's when somebody is hit or struck or has struck something. So if you fall and you hit your head on the sidewalk, you're going to have blunt trauma. If somebody hits you with their fist, you're going to have blunt trauma. There was a lot of blunt trauma on this victim's hands and face. All we know about the victim and his background, we know his name. We know that he's from Texas. He had a Texas driver's license found in the room. His wallet was found in the room. There was no money found in the room. The victim's car is downstairs in the parking lot. It has a Texas license plate. It doesn't look like it's been tampered with. It was locked, and there's a bunch of clothes inside. It looks like they're items that someone would show if they were a traveling salesman. These are men's clothing, samples, and we've learned from the clerk uh, that we talked to, I'm giving you a done lead, <laughs> that has already been taken care of for you. So the clerk verified this person's name and also told us that the victim told him he was from Texas, just moved here for a new job. He's in the clothing industry. That's all you know. Get to it. Start those lead sheets. Please get a hold of me with any questions. I don't mind answering questions. I'll be your supervisor on this case. What we're going to do is have you email me your lead sheets. I would love to read what you're going to do first. What's the most important lead? If you don't have them in order, that's no big deal. I just would like to see a list of leads that make sense to get this investigation off the ground and get us moving in some direction where we can start to generate more leads and hopefully find out what happened to this victim? Send your leads and your ideas about this case to truth at nybergpi.com, truth at nybergpi.com. Or if you're a Patreon member and you're already supporting the show, thank you very much. And you can certainly post a message there. I'm so happy you've joined me to participate in this. I hope you're enjoying it and having some fun. And the fun will continue in the next episode when I will read out your answers. I will read out your leads on the next episode, and we'll go into a deeper discussion about what it takes to solve a case like this. And I'll also talk about 
how we actually solved it back in 1987. Do you know anyone else that might be interested in investigations, detective work, true crime? Do you know any investigators that might want to improve their skills? Remember, that's what this podcast is all about. It's about getting better at the job so our investigations get better. Can't close out the episode without reminding you that my book, The 10 Must-Haves to Be a Great Detective, is available on Amazon as a Kindle ebook or in paperback. And hey, it'll be a great uh, supplement for you to be working on this case and get your lead sheet together. There's a whole chapter dedicated just to that. So I hope you can do that. And remember, always put your best foot forward, but don't forget to work on your other foot. See you next time. 